What's up, gang? Today we are looking at the McFarlane Toys Dark Knight's Metal Batman action figure. Now, this figure is based on the Greg Capullo style of Batman, who's been doing him since New 52, Dark Knight's Metal, and now we have The Last Knight on Earth and some others. And him and Scott Snyder have been like a dynamic duo when it comes to Batman, and it's really cool to see some more figures based on his work. Now, it's cool that McFarlane's doing this style because Capullo was doing Spawn for a long time, so they have that long history, and it's almost like this cool little honoring of the past to make these new figures based on the Dark Knight's metal line. And in the future, The Last Knight on Earth, which is, I think, coming out next year, the figures, I mean. So, back to this figure, we can see that the sculpt is really good. This is a really beefy, angry Batman, and I love the, the style his body is anatomy everything looks really cool but the thing is his paint is a little flat you can tell most of the figure is just a gray colored plastic now it's a good base and i'm happy that it's not a shiny plastic what you'll see from hasbro or mattel but this gray plastic still looks good but really knowing that we have the ability to customize this to make it a little better we're gonna do it so really what we want to do is bring out that sculpt a bit more take a little bit of artistic liberty and just make the figure look cool DC Collectibles did a statue not too long ago of this same representation of Batman in the same pose, and he's bloody and dirty and muddy, and that's basically what we want to do to this figure. And uh, we're going to go into the face, add some blood, add some wear and tear, and hopefully it's going to look cool in the end. So I start off with something called Mr. Super Clear, and this is the UV cut version. This really seals the figure well, has a nice flat finish, and just has everything applied to the figure very easily the paint the charcoal that we're going to apply the mod podge it just makes it and preps it to be a great great surface now i'm going to start off with the face here and i just want to start off doing these brown slash red washes kind of like a mix you can see my palette up there on the top left and i'm just really watering down this paint here and this is super cheap paint it's something you get at michael's hobby lobby Amazon, whatever, it's called Americana acrylic paint, and each bottle's about two bucks. So this isn't an expensive custom at all. But you can see I'm just applying some shadow washes under where the nose is at, bringing out the details in the creases here, and kind of just making the figure look a little more dynamic and bringing out those sculpt details here. Underneath the bottom lip, I'm bringing out that contour, and I'm almost kind of drawing in the shapes there but really really watered down not too strong if you mess up you can just wipe it away as you can see I'm like patting it with my finger if it's looking a little too strong too fast and the thing about washes is that you can just build it up slowly and slowly don't try to rush just kind of get through it and that's kind of my method and I'm sure there's much more efficient ways to do this kind of stuff but this is what works for me and uh yeah, so here we go. We're outlining the inner lip here just to make that contrast between the teeth and the lip stand out more. And you can see here, just super slight variations of washes to bring out the facial details. So now we're going to move on to the body, and this is something I love to do to bring out sculpt details when I can and when it applies. is this charcoal powder, so it's a big jar of just dust of charcoal, just down to its finest grains and you can get this from Amazon or any art supply store and it'll last you a lifetime pretty much if you're using it just for figures so to bring out the details here I'm just slapping that charcoal powder on with the brush and just going into all the little areas here all the little rivets the abs anything that's recessed into the sculpt will catch that black powder and then I wipe it away with some tissue and you kind of just rinse and repeat until you get the level of shadows that you want. And this is something you could do with the airbrush. You can dry brush this into super tiny areas. But I love this because it almost looks like an airbrush effect and comes out super clean. So this is pretty much the method of just rinse and repeat. Keep doing it until you like it. If you don't like it, you can just wipe it away, which is great. And I know you're thinking like, oh, isn't this all going to come off later? But this is why we do another coat of the Mr. Super Clear once we're completely, completely done. So here it is sealed. It looks great. 
Um, it's not going to smudge anymore. It's already sealed with the Mr. Super Clear, and it's ready to go to the next stage. So now we're jumping back to the head to keep things interesting, and we want to apply the blood and bruises and all that. And I'm looking at the DC Collectible statue again, just to have that reference and inspiration. So I'm using red mixed with a little bit of black, and I'm applying it with a wash, but this time the pigment is a little more on the intense side, so it's a little more opaque, uh, but slightly transparent, and I'm just drawing in the blood shape that I want. So you can do whatever shape you want, like Bob Ross, you can paint whatever trees or sky you want, but now we're talking about blood. So happy little blood trees. And I'm on the other side here now, just applying tiny little cuts, little areas where the skin is irritated. And then I'll go over it again with another coat of red to keep it, you know, a little more pungent. And here you see is a little stylized blood going on here, trickling down the chin, kind of like obeying the laws of gravity. Now this Mod Podge I'm showing you is puzzle glue, and I love to apply this over areas that have a wetness over it. And it basically goes on super white but it dries clear and not only will it make your blood or eyeballs or anything like that look wet and appear shiny but it'll also seal the paint in that area as well so it will protect it and that is a plus so I'm basically just tracing over all the areas where there's intense red and that's the area where the blood is going to appear wet and I'm also going over the eyes because why not? Even though they're white, now that we have a little shine on it, when you get that proper angle in the light, he'll have that kind of extra boosting white shining through the eyes there. And it's just something I decided to do on the spot. And before we jump back into the body here, I'm taking the axes that he comes with, and I'm just doing a brown wash, basically like what we did with the charcoal powder, but I'm doing it with the paint. So I'm taking the paint, and I'm just applying it and wiping it away. Now we're gonna do the flesh tones inside the rips of Batman's suit here and basically I, I didn't really mix anything for this I just used flesh right out of the tube even though it won't match his face since it's gonna be covered with washes of red and blood later on we're really not gonna notice that the flesh is a different color from his head skull. Alright and here are all the areas that we painted that flesh tone into and we're going to put some washes of red over it and some blood to make it look irritated. And it'll, it should blend in with the face well. And this is what we're going to do now. So basically the same thing we did with the face. We're going to take that red mixed in with the black and kind of water it down just a bit. And start applying it to the edges of the rips in the suit. And we're going to slowly build up those washes. So we don't go too over the top so he's not like covered in blood but really where he's injured that's where we want to put the blood. Now unfortunately McFarlane Toys didn't put any paint in the areas where there's rips so even if you get the figure you might, you might not even notice that he has those rips but that's why we want to take it out and make it look cool. Now next here last but not least before we're finished is we want to take some brown the same brown that I was using for the face before but strictly the brown and we want to dry brush that into different areas where Batman is on the dirt. So obviously the boots, his knees is if he's kneeling down, you know, the outside of the gauntlets. And this will really just take the figure to another level. And also the edges of the cape as well. Anywhere where dirt can hit him, that's where we want to keep it. And here we are. This is the figure. And you can see it's not a crazy custom. It wasn't too difficult. It doesn't take too much precision but we just wanted to make it look cool and more alive. You can see that he looks more gritty now. We can see the sculpt details way more, especially everything in the abdomen area. The bicep there, you can see, you know, the black there. And it almost looks a little comic book y. And the edges of the coat, we did a super dark brown. If you can see it there, it's more noticeable in person. But it does have the effect. On the axes, I did a slight, slight red wash because I didn't want him drenched in blood with those axes, but just to show remnants that he's been fighting. There's the brown on the boots as we have a crazy zoom here. Let's focus back. There we go. And there he is. You can just see that the sculpt is there more. And if you're going to tackle this custom, you can do more or less of that charcoal powder up to your heart's content. I like the the amount that I did. It's just enough to show, but not too much where it's distracting. 
Now looking at the face here, you can see he's angry, he's beat up, he's bleeding. The chest there, we had some blood dripping from his mouth onto the bat insignia on his chest. And you can see the washes that I did. The first washes were just to bring out the contours in the face. The second washes were the blood. And now he's looking really cool coming out of that comic book. And here's some of the cuts here. Camera's freaking out. You see the washes that I did with the flesh. More flesh on the other leg. And overall, I'm super happy with the way this came out. It was definitely a fun custom. I, I wanted to record it for you guys. And I'll show you some close-up pictures just about now. Here's the before and after. On the left, we have the base figure that is super gray and flat. Still super cool, though. And the right, we have the one that he's just super beat up and he's been through war. And here is my little display of the Dark Knight's metal line from McFarlane. This is a super cool line. I, I, I don't collect too many McFarlane DC figures, but this was just a really cool line. I don't know if it's just the, the Capullo style, but also the Build-A-Figure is amazing. The Merciless back there is huge, he's heavy, and him on his own is just an awesome figure. And I think it puts Marvel Legends to shame. Sorry, Marvel Legends fans and Hasbro fans. And here is the Grim Knight that I painted as well. So this is a custom, almost a kind of similar process that I did here. Here's a close-up of that because why not? Here he is. I just did some washes because he looked a little, you know, flat as well. And I wanted to bring that sculpt out. And uh, if you guys want to see a video of that, I can make it as well. But like I said, awesome Build-A-Figure. You only need to buy four figures to build this massive Merciless, and I think it's super worth it. So you guys should definitely check out this line. Here's a closer look at the base figure, and then a look at the final here. I thank you guys for watching this video and coming along this ride with me. You guys stay safe out there, and happy hunting. Enjoy your comics, and I'll see you later.